My new book, The Grace of Everyday Saints, is a story that I love. It's this remarkable, true story of a band of believers who came together in a crusade to save their church, St. Bridget in San Francisco, and also to unravel this mystery of why it was closed. This unlikely group of heroes, led by a renegade lawyer from the South, a questioning Catholic with a painful secret, which will be revealed in this book, and an anti-establishment priest who risks his collar to stand by parishioners would go on to wage what, what would be the longest parish protest in Catholic America. All they really wanted for their church, a 130-year-old institution which started its life as a two-room wooden structure on sand dunes while Abraham Lincoln was president, was to have their church reopened. But along the way, they would discover these amazing truths about themselves and about faith and about the power of community when hierarchies fail. And they also had their hearts broken. They would learn that these men that they revered the most, men who were supposed to represent God, were far from infallible. This portrait of parishioners without a parish struggling to keep faith alive sheds light on the real everyday consequences of what is the greatest scandal to have rocked the Roman Catholic Church. And it shows in intimate and painful detail the fallout not only from clergy abuse and the cover-ups from this horrific betrayal, but it also shows the, the legacy of the betray, that these betrayals left. Churches have been closed, dioceses have gone bankrupt, and really, hearts have been broken. These believers that I write about, they were betrayed, they were ignored, they were deceived, and yet they would not give up. I think that this book asks powerful questions about faith and love and what happens when those all-important things are tested. How far will you go to fight for something that you love? What happens when your faith is tested? And again, can communities save us when hierarchies fail? It also asks, is the faith that you find in the outdoors as powerful and as real as the faith that one can find in a glorious house of worship. Well, these parishioners, they walked away amazingly with answers to these questions. As I said, I love this story and I really love the characters. There are these everyday people, many of them immigrants who settled in San Francisco from across the globe. And they, they, they came here and they brought these rich faith traditions with them and they built these lives in the city by the bay. Really, they're some of the loveliest people that I've ever, ever met. They're funny and flawed and humble and heroic. And they've taught me what it means to fight for something that you love, even when you're being knocked down again and again. And they've taught me the power of faith. This is a story for believers and for non-believers, for Catholics, certainly, but also for people of any faith tradition or no faith tradition. Because this dramatic narrative takes the reader from the sunlit sanctuary in San Francisco to the halls of the Vatican in Rome. There are secrets and there's drama and there are accusations and counter accusations. There are these surprising twists and turns throughout the story, even, sadly, a tragic death. There's also, though, this great love and this humor, and there are these characters that you will welcome as your friends. I've now spent more than six years with these people, and they are as compelling and is as important to me today as when I first learned of their crusade. When I first learned that they had kept this solitary candle burning on the front steps of St. Bridget already for more than a decade. Well, now it's been more than 16 years since their beloved church was closed. And this band of believers, they have not given up. 
They continue to meet in the basement of a nearby church that has offered them sanctuary, all in an effort to get St. Bridget reopened. And from time to time, a candle still burns on the front steps of their church. As I was thinking about the title for this book, something that the Irish priest who is involved in this struggle, in their resistance, something that he said has resonated. It was his description of these parishioners. He said, they have the spirit of fighters and the grace of saints. And this book, The Grace of Everyday Saints, is something that I hope will stay with you.